After the defeat at Cold Harbor, Grant turned his attention to seizing the city of Petersburg, Virginia, which lay 24 miles south of Richmond and served as a railroad junction that supplied the Northern Confederacy. Petersburg was the key to taking Richmond, and both Grant and Lee knew it. If Petersburg fell, every Confederate supply and communication line that ran to Richmond would be entirely cut off. On June 12, 1864, Union troops began crossing the James River using a 2,200-foot-long pontoon bridge. Three days later, on June 15th, 16,000 Union troops attacked the Petersburg defenses, manned by fewer than 3,000 Confederates. The Union assault drove the Confederate defenders from three separate entrenched positions, and the rebels retreated back into the city itself. As night fell, the Union was poised to take the city, but Union commanders declined to launch a nighttime assault. Under cover of darkness, Lee rushed in reinforcements and ordered his men to dig trenches with which to defend the city against the superior Union numbers. Three days later, on June 18th, three Union divisions attacked the Confederate trenches outside the city and were repulsed with heavy casualties. By this point, Confederate forces had built fortified works around the city and were heavily entrenched. The opportunity to quickly take Petersburg was lost, and both armies dug in for a siege. For nine long months, the titanic stalemate at Petersburg, Virginia continued to linger on. Confederate lines grew thinner by the day. An estimated 60,000 Confederate soldiers deserted Lee's army during the nine-month siege. By late March, 1865, Lee had 35,000 men to Grant's 125,000. Finally, on April 2, 1865, desperate to break out, General Grant ordered a massive pre-dawn assault that drove Confederate forces from their trenches and ramparts. Unable to hold his position any longer, Lee sent a dispatch to President Jefferson Davis, informing him that he would have to abandon the city. On April 3, 1865, Lee's army slipped away to the west and Grant's army captured the city of Petersburg. So why did this battle matter? Petersburg's fall led to the capture of the Confederate capital of Richmond the same day. When Petersburg fell, Lee could no longer protect the Confederate capital of Richmond, leaving it and its citizens vulnerable to Grant's army. The city was hastily evacuated and the Confederate government fled via train to the countryside. Later that day, Union troops marched into the city and hoisted the American flag atop the city center. Richmond had fallen, and the Union had achieved the final objective of its grand plan to win the war. Later that day, President Abraham Lincoln visited the city of Richmond and sat at Jefferson Davis's desk. The last remnants of Lee's army were all alone and on the run from Grant's army. Upon leaving Petersburg, Lee had fewer than 25,000 men in the Army of Northern Virginia. With the Confederate government on the run and without any hope of resupply, the remnants of Lee's army was practically on its own. In a desperate attempt to flee Grant's superior numbers, Lee took his men west into the Virginia countryside. However, Grant was close behind every step of the way. Lee's men were sick, starving, and tattered, desperately trying to evade the Union armies closing in on every side. The war was all but over. <laughs>